What? Green Lantern bombed? How do you do that? How do you screw up a concept as simple as Green Lantern? That's like screwing up digesting jello. Damn it, DC. Well, no. It's all right. Justice League movie is coming. And there is no way you can ruin a concept as simple as the Justice League. You want to bet? Did I leave my camera on? Yep. Um, how long? Don't worry, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again, sir. Funny. Oh, you want me to tell them what you were really doing? Hey, everybody, when no one's around, Nash likes to dress up as... Okay, okay. Did you have a reason for lurking, or were you going for your electronic creeper merit badge? What, you mean you really don't know? Know what? About the original Justice League movie. You're saying words, but all I hear is crazy. Seriously? Man, I thought you'd know, having been in high school in the 90s and all. You know, 20 years ago. Way back. Before the internet. Last century. You're old. I get it. Hey, I'm just surprised that you haven't heard of it before. It was all over the place. Like where, for example? Oh, you know, comic conventions and, um... Comic conventions and, um, um... Comic conventions? See? Everywhere! Okay, so you're telling me that a production studio made an actual Justice League of America movie and it never aired? Is it that bad? You want to find out? No. No, I don't. Are you sure? Yes, I'm very sure. Okay, okay, fine. Just stop looking at me like that. I knew you'd come around. Or die of a coronary. I've had both reactions. We open up. Oh, God! <laughs> And somehow, that's still better 3D than The Last Airbender. Okay, so after that, we head to the completely nondescript New Metro City and the Eno Meteorological Institute, where we meet Dr. Eno himself, played by Miguel Ferrer. You might know him from every TV villain role ever. And this is Tori Olofstadter. She'll be our klutzy geek girl for the film. You know, sir, I, I'm not even sure I should come. You're much better at that sort of thing. Me, on the other hand... An attractive, intelligent researcher who was going to knock him dead. Well, I, I think that's your department. Uh, you know, the knock him dead part, not, not the attractive. Well, no, I, you know, I'm not saying that you're not attractive. It's just... <laughs> What a coincidence, I thought the same thing. No, I'm a nice guy, I think, you know. I like to go uh, eat sushi sometimes. I like to go to the park, have a little picnic and stuff, you know. I don't know. Wait, wait. What was that? We flip over to Jersey Shore? Nope, that's just the framing device for the movie. What? Yeah, the entire movie is interspersed with these bits where the Justice League sit and talk to an interviewer off camera. But don't they have secret identities? Oh, yeah. Then who are they talking to? We never find out. Could you just go ahead and give me that coronary? We see the Flash, yes, this really is the Flash, getting evicted from his apartment after losing his job. Tell it to somebody who cares. Not cool, man. Back at the Eno Institute, a storm is brewing. Literally. Dr. Eno should see this. See what? Oh, um, wind speed's topping 210. We're, we're right off the Safer Simpson scale. A hurricane in New Metro. Yeah, first one on record. Oh, we could all die. Who will save us? 
Good afternoon, New Metro. This is the weatherman with today's forecast. In case you haven't noticed, it's windy out. It's very windy. Those gusts are up to 200 miles per hour, and I'm afraid it's the beginning of a severe weather trend. And their response to Osama bin Fremen? Friendly camaraderie. You mean like, like out, outside, out? Can't spend your life in front of a computer, Taurus. Of course not. World of Warcraft won't be invented for another decade. Hey, Meanwhile, Green Lantern Guy Gardner is... Oh, you are kidding me! Oh. That was Guy Gardner. I, uh... I'm afraid so. But... But Guy Gardner is loud and angry and obnoxious and ginger! This is the guy who, when he got kicked out of the Green Lantern Corps, stole Sinestro's yellow ring in order to keep his... Did I set off the continuity alarm? You did, in fact, set it off, yes. I don't know whether I'm proud or sad. I think the fact that you can't decide is answer enough. Cheryl, I'm going to be there for you more often in the future, I promise. Starting real soon. Guy, don't walk. Do -do douche The character introduction train wreck continues as we're presented with Fire, a superhero and also aspiring actress. I am a banana! I'd uh, just like to take a moment and reassure our viewers that you are in fact seeing a dancing strawberry in a JLA movie and are not having a stroke. Even if you wished you were. Fire manages to stumble into the arms of Martin, played by David Krumholtz. His superpower is the ability to have a career after this movie. <laughs> oh, uh, but I got a split, so... You get it? Split? Banana split? Ho, oh, movie! Where does your wit and charm start? And we have one more for our cast, Ray Palmer, the Adam, played by John Kassir. You may remember him as the voice of the Crypt Keeper, and absolutely nothing else. The most fascinating aspect of the photosynthetic process is... I'm the only one who's fascinated by it. You're talking about photosynthesis and there's a freaking hurricane outside! What do you think? We then see a mother and child playing in the hurricane. The one meteorologist picked up on radar a long while ago. Methinks someone was looking for an easy way of losing mommy's little mistake. Thank you, Green Lantern. Just get him someplace safe. Like child services. And even more people continue to be outside working in the hurricane. Did natural selection take a holiday? Coffee breaks over. What a bitch. Next, we see... Oh, come on. Are we really doing this? Yep, the Adam is really rescuing a little old lady's kitty from the storm. Later, you will realize they wasted money on this effects shot instead of an actual supervillain battle. Well, if your frontal lobe hasn't become yogurt by then. Come on, baby, come on. Come on. In all of this, the Flash is the only one to do anything super heroic. He runs counter to the hurricane and dissipates it. And now the Justice League leap into finding the culprit. Good work, Flash. Thanks. Who do we save next? Storm's over. We're done rescuing people for the day. What was that all about? I don't know, but you think that weatherman's for real? Nobody can manipulate the weather. It's impossible. No. Finding a job is impossible. Oh, Nash, you ignorant dumbass. Don't you know that a man who can cause a hurricane isn't compelling storytelling? Searching want ads? That's what an audience wants from superheroes. Look, I'm trying, okay? It just doesn't come as easy for me as it does for you guys. And Ray here is oozing with brains. He'll probably do whatever he wanted. And you got the gift of gab. And you can sell lights to Eskimos. But, but me, what are my special skills? Gee, I don't know. Maybe the uh, ability to move faster than the human eye? This man can read the entire Library of Congress in the amount of time it takes me to fart, and he's whining that he can't find a job. Where'd I put my world's smallest violin? Meanwhile, back at the plot... There's a plot? Shut up. Meanwhile, Tori is working late at the weather lab when she finds a hidden steel briefcase. So, of course, she respects the privacy of her co-workers and leaves it alone... Oh, wait, I forgot what we were watching. In 
instant superpowers. Just add water. Yes, Tori now gains ice powers from accidentally pouring water in a box of weather control. Sciencey stuff. This makes being bitten by a radioactive spider look plausible. How'd that happen? But again, it would seem what audiences really want is to watch superheroes repair appliances because the Atom uses his incredible shrinking powers to attempt to fix the TV. Hey, hurry up. You know, we're going to miss a touch by an angel. Add other fine programming from CBS. CBS, because Granny needs TV, too. <laughs> okay, Ray Palmer, super scientist, just electrocuted himself fixing a television. And he gets showed up by a repairman who fixes the TV with a piece of gum. Why am I showing you this part? Because it's a freaking plot point. Fun fact, in screenwriting, the Chekhov's gun technique is rivaled only by the Hubba Bubba Gambit. But Nash, if they don't fix the TV, how else could they get a visit from the plot convenience fairy? New Metro Evening, Thomas Kinsey was saved from drowning when Lake Adenac suddenly turned to ice. In other news, all local fishermen have lost their jobs. New Metro economy decimated, riots in the streets, and now sports. Does this smell like chloroform to you? How many times have you used that joke? Boy, don't judge, mister. I am a man! Don't be afraid, Tori. Who are you? What do you want? Where did my underwear go? How did you freeze the river? I, I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's impossible for... That, that isn't me. I never learned to crossfade. But Tori objects to being, you know, kidnapped, so they knock her out again and take her home. The JLA thinks she may be the weatherman, but... Wait, wait, wait. The weatherman? Isn't there already a DC-based weather villain? Oh yeah, the weather wizard. Longtime foe of the Flash, showed up here and there around the DC universe, once fought the Quick Bunny. Okay, so why not use him instead of the weatherman? Or, for that matter, why don't you use a classic JLA villain like Dr. Destiny or Amazo or Starro? Nash, they turned Guy Gardner into a metrosexual, Barry Allen into The Situation, and The Atom into Bill Nye the Science Guy. Imagine for a minute what they do with someone like Starro the Conqueror. I'll shut up now. Back at work, Dr. Eno is acting a little funny. I think he's up to something. Just look into it. But sir, still, I, you know, it's it's just a feeling, not not based on anything. I mean, I, I would hate it. Are you all right? I just have to go turn into the Hulk now. Excuse me. Oh, look at that hand. It's green. Wait, he is turning into the Hulk? I'm freaking psychic! And hey, look! He just passed himself walking into work. If you weren't confused yet, the movie is happy to fix that. Fire thinks she has an audition with a French director, but it turns out to be Martin, who seems to be trying to unlock the inept stalker achievement. Well, I do know that you're between boyfriends, now, and, and, and sometimes you get lonely. And you're looking for that perfect someone, a soulmate. Uh, and your standards are so high that you wonder if you're ever going to find them. How do you know that? Oh, you know, rifling through your trash, keylogging your computer, stealing your panties, the usual ways. Back with Green Lantern, he's having woman trouble. Who the hell wrote this? Aaron Spelling? Come on. You can't fool me. I can't? No. I know what you really are. You do? She knows I'm gay? But just as Guy is trying to patch together his love life, the weatherman strikes a single city square with hail. Way to step up your game, weather dude. The Green Lantern saves his girl from being lightly annoyed with a handy umbrella. At least there's one gentleman left. How does she not know that guy? Same hair, same face, same voice. Is Green Lantern trying to score with the dumbest woman in the city? Look at fire, she's melting the hailstorm and turning it into rain. Is your superpower stating the obvious? Back at the JLA's headquarters, um, apartment, the team gets new orders from the TV set. Hey guys, didn't work for Carol Ann and Poltergeist, probably won't work for you. But if it's him, he's been pretty slippery. I mean, how are we supposed to get to him? 
He'll be at Eno's fundraiser this afternoon to unveil something. Let's find out what it is. Adam. Yes, sir. The computer files might prove to be of particular interest. Consider it done. Let's hope Popke is the man we're looking for. New Metro can't afford any more changes in the weather. I now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Apparently the team is being led by Comcast. So the JLA sneak into the Institute fundraiser, but as Green Lantern is meant to be keeping lookout for the Atom, he runs into his girlfriend. But of course he keeps to his do- How stupid are you? Well, the Atom goes snooping, but he encounters some security, so he... Um... Hmm? Okay, th th there has got to be a way to make that scene make sense. I got it. Describe it to me again. Uh, the atom shrinks down and limbo's under the lasers. Again. The atom shrinks down and limbo's. No, still stupid. Again. The atom limbo's under. No, stupid. Ugh. The Atom Limbos. I like Moo Cow. Are you okay? Fish. Well, the Atom finds the files that reveal the plans for the Weatherman's magical box of science, but he's interrupted by Tori. Hardwired satellite feed. Some science teacher. It's not what you think. I was just looking at porn. Wait. Well, after showing her the plans, the Atom slips by security, but this happens. And sometimes I would get big again, but part of me would stay small. I wonder if there's any woman who ever fell for that. That night, Tori goes to show the plans to Dr. Eno, but she makes a shocking discovery. Hello, New Metro. Now pay attention. There's some stormy weather ahead, and I'm afraid you're in for a bumpy ride. And as you can see from this morning's forecast, we're looking at isolated showers. But as to where they're isolated, well, that's the more surprise. <gasps> the well-known character actor was really the villain? What a twist! Yes, she freezes the door solid along with his hand, but since this is CBS, the number of fingers he loses and the number of brain cells it took to write this are identical. Zero. Martin returns to stock fire anew. This guy must collect restraining orders like baseball cards. I knew we had a lot in common. <laughs> I bet you like taking long, leisurely walks along the waterfront. How do you know that? Why, through the magic of tapping your phone, fair lady. Oh, but he's not done. He's got a special gift for her. He went to Kmart? He went to Kmart? Aw, he went to Kmart. Creep. Fire gets called away for an exciting action scene. But rather than show you, they'll just let this woman describe it to you. Cambro Bluffs almost became Cambro Falls today when a freak rainstorm turned the cliff behind me into a wall of mud. But another weatherman disaster was averted by fire, baking the hillside in the nick of time. Because it's not like film is a visual medium or anything. Next, we'll finish the movie with shadow puppets. We're not that lucky, Nash. We're not that lucky. Tori goes to tell the JLA about her boss being the baddie, so they introduce her to their leader, the Martian Man. Holy moly! Well, now we know what happened to the rest of the Green Martians. He ate them. And because Tori has ice powers, they invite her to join the JLA. What seems like a curse can become a gift. Except my damn thyroid condition, that just sucks. Elsewhere, Martin stops for an ice cream cone with plot contrivance sprinkles. Things up around here. Thing, Those are my earrings. Wow. Wow! Yeah, it's not the fact that it's the same face, the same hair, or that because her mask is just makeup over her eyes. No, it's the earrings that betray her secret identity. <laughs> If you ever wanted to know how Clark Kent got away with the glasses thing, it's not that it's a different posture, a different way of speaking, or anything like that that makes him act differently. It's just that the people of the DC Universe are complete imbeciles! Well, Martin confronts Fire on her secret identity. They try to cover by having the Martian Manhunter shapeshift into a duplicate, 
Oh, with them standing side by side, there is no way he could buy the... Well, you wore the earrings. Yeah, that she loaned me. What are you calling me a liar? Can I borrow your hammer? Mine! But I'll see you around, huh? Au revoir, ma chérie. I'm gonna go ahead and stock Starfire. See ya! Dr. Reno shows up at Tori's house, having figured out that she has ice powers by doing something no one else in this film can do. Pay attention! You saw they were gonna cut our funding. And now with this, and with your powers... What powers? What do you... Come on. The champagne at the party, that kid in the lake. What about the door you froze on the roof? Think about what we could do together. You're insane. How dare you use common sense in this movie! Tori takes Eno's briefcase back to the JLA, but instead of the science box, it's a homing device for a giant laser. You would think that if you have a giant space-based weapon with precise accuracy, that would be the sort of attack you would lead with, but, well, that would require thinking. The door shorts out, but the Atom repairs it by using the same trick the TV repairman did. Chewing gum. The distance they went for that plot point could circle the Earth. Twice. So it's off to stop the weatherman from destroying the city with a tidal wave. Uh-oh. Think they used the wrong music there. Don't worry. I'll fix it. Changing the forecast. A dark cloud and an otherwise perfect day. How did you ever escape? Juicy fruit. Uh the award for worst product placement goes to sequence surfs up but dr eno starts the wave and thwarts green lantern by throwing the science box off a cliff i can't stop the wave man if only green lantern could fly wait i mean if only green lantern wasn't so stupid he forgot he could fly all the other heroes are powerless until tori learns to believe in herself and her powers Wow, I think I just threw up in my mouth a little. Green Lantern captures the weatherman, and the JLA invite Tori to join their ranks. Fire even made her this sweet stripper outfit. But Dr. Eno has smuggled a laser into prison and uses it to escape? How dumb are these guards? Hey, is that a laser? Uh, no. Ah, uh, okay. But never fear, New Metro City, because there will always be a Justice League of America, whether you like it or not. So, what did you think? That was awful! I swear to you people, this thing was pure punishment. Instead of trying to make a show on a par with CBS's other superhero hit of the era, The Flash, or in line with the Burton Batman franchise, the network opted to combine the adventure of superheroes with the aesthetic of friends and succeeded at neither. The plot only works if all the characters have severe brain damage, the portrayal of all these characters is completely off base, and while the special effects are pretty good for its day, they waste that by not supplying a single worthwhile action scene. You could have lit the budget for this thing on fire and it would have provided more entertainment. There's no official release of this pilot, but you smart kids with your Googles and your YouTubes can probably find it somewhere to watch, or you'll be like me and have a bootleg. If you hate yourselves. How you holding up, Nash? Gee, I don't know. My head hurts, my blood pressure is spiked, and wait, yes, I've completely forgotten how to do long division. Why do you ask? Oh, is that all? Well, I can fix you right up. As it happens, I have a copy of the NBC Wonder Woman pilot here if you want to watch. I guess not. Oh, well. Teaches you to diss time in the Ronnie, you stupid frickin'. Long-haired hippie freak!